moment they would have a headache or they would have the symptoms of a headache. And uh, I saw myself call that person forward and they came down to the altar and, and, and I ministered to them and I'm getting ready to do that. But little did I know, at the first service, we had one dear lady. This was her first time visiting Faith Family Church. Wow. And guess what? She had a headache. Yeah. And not just a light headache. She had a full-on headache. I could see it in her eyes. And just by the Spirit of God, I just said, as I said, I'm coming to you in demonstration. God's going to demonstrate that this is your day, that this is the day where he's turning things around. And so if you're here today and you have a headache, come forward. She came forward, man, and she was ministered to, and she left blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to start this service off the same way, and then I'm going to have you be seated. But per chance, per adventure, and I'm going to minister to everybody. So if you don't have this... I'm going to get to you. Amen. But if you're here today, and as you've come in today, that right now you have a headache, whether it be a light head or just a full-on headache, if that's you, I want you to step forward and come meet me here at the altar. supernatural no. yeah yeah that's the spirit of God yeah. amen now this is what the Lord demonstrated to me the Bible talks about that in that in Peter's life the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit was so strong that the people brought unto him sick folks and they lined the streets just to get close to him so that if the shadow passed him and came over them as he passed by, that they would be healed of their infirmity. I saw in my heart that I would have you come up and that I would minister to you for a moment, but I want you to sit close to me on the front row. Amen. So there's an open seat over there. So Brother Jamie, if you could sit over there, and then we're going to free up. And then we got one there. Amen. So as you are sitting through this service, I'm believing that the power of God is going to relieve you from that symptom as a testimony of his power working in your life. Amen. Stretch your hands towards our dear sisters. Father, in the name of Jesus, you showed me in advance that there would be these that have the symptoms of a headache, what would be considered a minor ailment. And as Jesus laid hands upon a few folks with some minor ailments, he healed them. I lay hands upon these today to release an anointing. Yes, it release an anointing to remove the burden and to cause that symptom to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your purse, just go grab your purse and come sit here on the front row. Congregation, you all may be seated. And as you're seated, praise God. I want you to open with me in your Bible to the book of James chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you today just briefly in the time that I have about resisting sickness. This is a message that the Lord has given to me. And if I were to give a subtitle to it, it is a message that's about resisting not just sickness, but sickness, disease, and the effects of injury. I want to teach you how to resist sickness, disease, and even the effects of injury. So in James chapter 4, we'll find our text for today. Hallelujah. Been praying for you all week. And you're going to leave with your healing manifested today. So I want you to stay hooked and connected. In James chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, I, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What does the Bible tell us to do about the devil? 
it clearly says that we are to resist the devil. And when we resist the devil, what does the Bible say? What does God say the devil will do? He will flee from you. And so my assignment today is to minister on the subject of sickness and disease and injury. And the Bible talks about, in different places, sickness and disease. For example, in the book of Matthew chapter 9, Jesus had been new to the ministry. He just launched out in ministry in Matthew chapter 4. And then we get into chapter 5 and we get over into chapter 9. And all of a sudden... We see in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35, he's at a point. How many of y'all know everywhere he went, he went to minister to people? The Bible says that he went into all the cities. He went to all the villages teaching in their churches. What did he do? He taught the people. It's really one of the first things that he did is he taught the people and then he preached to the people. So he taught in the synagogues. He preached them. Today, I'm going to teach this message to teach you how to resist sickness and disease in your body and in your family members and in other people's lives and to teach you how to resist the effects that you may be experiencing right now in your body from injury. But then also he went about in all the cities and villages healing every sickness and every disease. There was no incurable sickness or incurable disease that could not be healed in Jesus' ministry. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But here's the thing. Doctors tell us today that there are certain diseases that are incurable. That if you contract hepatitis C, that you can manage it, you can learn to live with it, but it's essentially incurable. I'm here today to tell you that is a lie from the pit of hell. Doctors will tell you that they haven't found the cure to cancer. And I'm here to announce that Jesus healed all manner of sickness. AIDS is nothing but a name that had to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. But the question of the day is whose report will you believe? Just because they show you your blood, uh, the, 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 the blood, uh, they take your blood and they show you that your A1C level is pre-diabetic or that they show you that your glucose is now diabetic does not change the word of God. That's the doctor's report. My challenge to you is whose report will you believe? There's certain things that they say that you were born with. It's uh, congenital. You, you will, it, it was a birth defect and that you will have this for the rest of your life. I'm here to announce that you can resist that thing. And according to the word of God, not my word, but God's word, you can stand on it. You can resist it and it will flee from you. He ministered to every sickness. Matter of fact, not only that, but in Matthew chapter 10, just a few verses later, in Matthew chapter 10, not only did Jesus minister to those that had all kinds of sickness and disease, but he sent his disciples. In verse 1, it says this, when he had called his 12 disciples, number one, I am called by God. I've been called since I've been a child. I heard the voice of the Lord, as it were, in my heart, longing me and drawing me into the ministry. He called me into this ministry. Not only am I called by God, but I'm a disciple of Jesus. Do I have any other disciples of Jesus? He called his disciples and he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. I don't care what kind of sickness or disease 
that may be trying to come against you, he's given me authority and he's given me the power over of the Holy Spirit over all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. And he did it for your sake. In Luke chapter 4, I can remember Jesus, and this was really just at the beginning of his ministry. I sent out a text, and uh, for those of you that allow us to connect and communicate with you, as a pastor, it's important for me to be able to let you know if I have a word from heaven for you. Um, I need to be reachable and accessible. Um, and so we have this, this text com connection and communication where I can send out a message. And I just was moved by the Holy Spirit just driving down the street. And, you know, I, I sent out a message saying, hey, we're going to have a healing service. Invite people that are dealing with physical, mental, or brokenheartedness. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus said something, and I, I want you to forever remember, because sickness goes beyond just a cold yes, yes, yes. Or, or, or something going on with your digestive system. It can also be mental. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is real. Yes, is. And, and people can deal with varying levels of mental illness. And sometimes a person can deal with mental illness and not know that it's actually a mental illness. Yes. But he healed all kind, right? Yeah. But notice this. In Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18, Jesus said on that day, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've been praying all week, man, and I sense the spirit of the Lord upon me right now. That's why I wanted them to be close to me. Amen. Why is the spirit of the Lord upon me? He is upon me because he has anointed me. I am anointed by the Holy Spirit today. What is the anointing? It is the smearing on, rubbing on, painting on, pouring on, uh, God pouring the Holy Spirit upon you. According to Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, he said, In that day, his, meaning Satan, his yoke shall be dis taken from off of your shoulder, and his, his yoke, his burden shall be taken off of your shoulder, and his yoke from around your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yeah. You know, that may not be a word that you text somebody, you know. But it is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Well, Jesus had that anointing on him. But notice it was to preach the gospel to the poor. He was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberties to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. It just come up in my heart. If you have a child who's been diagnosed with a symptom that the doctors are saying, is incurable, and that's something that they'll have to live with. I'm thinking of one young lady, Charity, was just recently fitted with um, hearing aids. I want to lay hands on her so if somebody can uh, make a note. I know her mom's serving, and so somebody will have to get word to her mom to, to take a break uh, at, at some point. I'll lay hands on them at the end, but, uh, but at some point I want to lay. And, and, and then there's another child. They wanted to say that, that this child has the symptoms, that this child might have autism. Well, I want to lay hands on that child. Come on, he, he, he opened blind eyes. He caused the deaf to hear. He caused the lame to walk. How many of y'all are believing for miracles today? But notice, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You might be here today and it's not a physical sickness, it's not a mental sickness. You're dealing with some real brokenheartedness. Maybe you were in a love relationship and somebody broke your heart and you really haven't been the same. If that's you, I want to minister to you. And I want to teach you today how to resist the symptoms of that. And that'll be important to you in a moment. So we're talking about sickness and disease and we're not just limiting it to physical sickness. We're including mental sickness. So if you're here and that's you, I'm going to minister to you. And even if you're brokenhearted, the Bible talks about individuals who were love sick. I know not everybody has been there. I'm 
remember that girl broke my heart. <laughs> but I'm healed, amen? amen? Oh, amen. I didn't mean like right now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Just keep her on standby. I'm going to minister to her in a moment. I got a package. Oh, you got a package? Yeah. Um, amen. I'm sorry about that. Oh, boy, we're interrupting the service here. We're in the middle of a service. What's this? Uh, this, I don't know. Some package. Anybody got a pen? I can have them. Right, thank you. Uh, some package from the Pit of Hell. It's Sunday. Why is Amazon running on Sunday? <laughs> it's a special, special delivery. Okay, who is it from? It's for me. Yeah, it says uh, Scott Pit of, from the Pit of Hell Incorporated. Oh no, I don't no want that. Disease. <laughs> no disease or nothing. No, you don't I don't want that. want that. You can return that to sender. Right. Give him a hand clap. <laughs> That's what you need to do with sickness and disease. Take that back from where you came from. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 1, if you look at this with me, in chapter 1, the Bible tells of a story of a man who fell down through a lattice from the second floor. He was in the upper chamber. He was in Samaria. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been hurt by accident? This guy fell through a lattice, some kind of roof. He was in his bedroom, upper chamber. He was in Samaria. I don't know what he was doing. How do you fall out the window? Fall somehow, but fell through a lattice. And he was sick as a result of it. You see that? He fell and was sick as a result of it. He sent messengers and said unto them, go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Now, the interesting thing about this is he's a child of God. And he's talking about go to Beelzebub. If I remember, and it's like in some movie, that's the name of the devil. What's he doing going to the devil to find out whether he's going to get better or not? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Because you should always first go to God before you go to the doctor. Now, I'm not saying the doctor is the devil, but I am telling you and teaching you from the word of God that just because there are things that may help you uh, be relieved of discomfort, you don't go to them without first going to him. Matter of fact, Elijah the prophet went to Ahaziah and told him that because you went to Beelzebub to find out about this, you're not going to be cured from this. And he ended up dying. If you read your chapter this week, amen. Second Kings chapter one is an eye opener. Why? He fell down, got hurt, got sick and had a disease as a result of it. And he sent folks to find out from those without God whether he was, you know, what to do about that. There's a lesson there for us to learn. But the Spirit of God moved on me because in the last four or five years, I often hear messages that minister about sickness and disease. But sometimes we're dealing with things in our body that are simply a result of injury. And I know that he, he, he forgave me of all my sins and healed me of all of my diseases. But what about my injuries? I remember one time not too long ago, well, it was a few years, actually, probably six or seven years ago. I was in my backyard. I was at the time living on two acres and I had a big old tractor. And um, I don't know why this thing is like as big as a little car. You know, you know, the tractors with the two big old tires. I'm a city boy. I don't know what I'm doing driving a tractor. Somehow or another, I was trying to push it in order to get the, the, the brush hall connected. Man, I'm really showing myself today. <laughs> trying to get the brush hall, and I'm trying to move it up a bit. You can't push no tractor. <laughs> but listen, I'm an athlete. Y'all, oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you feel like you're strong, you're strong, you know. You, you may not as strong as you used to be. You feel like you still got it. I'm trying to muscle this tractor, and I, I kind of, I felt like either I slipped or, you know, I just kind of tweaked my, I called it tweaked my back a little bit. Well, you know, you shake that kind of stuff off, and you kind of, you know, oh, okay, I can't push it, and you kind of back off. Well, that night, I can still kind of feel it. Got up the next day, I could still kind of feel that. 
then, you know, normally, I, and again, I've been taught in the word of faith and how to believe for healing. And so I'm thinking this is not anything major. I go on, and now it's three or four days. And I, you know, and now it's like my, 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 like my buttocks is, it's like, ah, there's some pain there. You know, I figured, okay, well, maybe it wasn't, surely it wasn't when I was trying to move the tractor. Maybe it's because I had my wallet and I, and I, you know, I, I used to care. I don't care if my wallet in my pocket now, uh, because I thought maybe I was throwing my alignment off. <laughs> you know, and so now, you know, now, now I think it's the mattress because now it's three or four weeks in this, and now this thing is running down to my, from my buttocks down to my kneecap. Some of y'all already think, oh, that's your sciatic. Sure enough, uh, some time after that, my neighbor came out. His name was Yogi. And, uh, man, he was, like, limping. And he said, man, my sciatic nerve. Now, again, being a young man, I didn't pay no attention to the commercials about sciatic. But uh, he said, sciatic. And he said, well, I said, well, what's that? Well, it's a nerve that runs from here down through my leg. And it's just, and all of a sudden, the thought came to me, you got sciatic. <laughs> Now, every time I'm watching anything on TV, I see the commercial. And sure enough, they show it where they show your nerve, your spine, your spinal cord, and then they serve the nerve, and it's flaming, flaming. You know, you see all of that? And, and so let me tell you what I didn't do. I didn't Google the sciatic nerve. I didn't even go to the doctor about the sciatic nerve. Once I realized that this thing didn't just go away, that it wasn't just some you know, temporal thing that just went away on its own, so to speak, I realize I've got to resist it in faith. And that's what I want to teach you today. I'm going to lay hands on you. But I need to teach you how, to, what you're supposed to do with sickness and disease. Because my healing, me living a healthy, blessed life was bought and paid for by Jesus nearly 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. And so I'm not going to go through life with sickness, disease, or the effects of injury. Why? Because he bought and paid for my healing. So I begin to put the resistance up, and God is my wisdom. It didn't happen overnight. I mean, the last I could remember, it was somewhere like nine months, and I'm like, I'm steadfast in the faith. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. My brain is blessed. My spinal cord is blessed. All the way out to my furthest nerve endings are whole and function like God has designed. I said it again and again and again. What am I doing? I'm doing what my pastors have taught me to do. I am resisting the devil, and I know he will flee from me. And it took months and months. I, and you know what? When you get on a consistency of that, I don't even remember when it left. But I stand before you today with not a pain in my body from the crown of my head. To the, I don't even know that I have a sciatic. <laughs> he fell. In the New King James, the same verse said that ah Ahaziah fell. Somebody said he fell. Uh, Brother John, after he had joined the church, began to get involved and tell me. But and he said, Pastor, uh, I had an injury. He was thrown like 20 feet off of a truck. And it hurt his back, and the L5 and the S1. How do I know that? Because for the last two or three months, I've been speaking over his L5 and S1. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But whatever in his back that ain't lying quite right. Come on. I'm speaking to it. I'm speaking to his spine. I'm, when I'm praying for you, that's what, that's what being part of a family is. You know, my son had a slight fever on yesterday. Amen. Do you, you better believe we resisted that. Amen. The, the Bible says that Jesus spoke to the fever that was on Peter's mother and the fever left her. That's what you're supposed to do. Thank God for Tylenol. Amen. And, you know, we use wisdom. We got little thermostats and stuff like that. But you best believe before they do anything, before we look at anything, before we call on anything, we are resisting it in the name of Jesus. Am I teaching you anything good today? Well, his symptoms, Brother John, are as a result 
of being thrown off a truck. What does the Bible have to say? You might be here and things are going on because you, you know, oh yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen carefully. Your liver was injured because of years of alcohol use. This come up to me by the Holy Spirit. I didn't say it at the first service. And there's, whether you be on the internet or whether you be in the service, what you're dealing with right now is a result of things that you, um, emphysema, uh, it's, it's a disease, you know, where the lungs and the rest of it, and often caused as a result of, of, of a person who smokes. And, and, and with stuff like that, things that you used to do, you know, maybe you contracted something over time, a, a contagious type disease. Are you to just live with that? No. Jesus took your sicknesses, and that includes diseases. That includes the effects of damage caused, injury. He fell through the lattice of his, um, no, 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 you're fine. I, he fell through the lattice of his upper room and was what? Injured. He sent messengers and said to them, go inquire from Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, whether I shall recover. Somebody say recover. Yeah. The question is, this injury, this thing that's affected you for now for years, even decades, can you recover from that? The answer is yes. You can recover, and I want to teach you exactly, come on, how to do it. Amen? Look at this. I didn't know. Uh, turn with me to the book of Nahum. Somebody's like, nah, who? <laughs> now, this is where the page will stick in your Bible. You literally have, you might have to go to the table of contents to find this one. In, t in 20-something years, I have never preached out of Nahum. But the Spirit of God took me to a verse last night to give to you, especially if you're here and you've done things by accident or intentionally. If you've injured yourself, you need to hear this word from the Lord. In Nahum chapter 3 and verse number 19, he says, your injury has no healing. Your wound is severe. All who hear news of you will clap their hands over you. For upon whom has not your wickedness passed continually? Obviously, Nahum as a prophet is prophesying to the children of Israel because of their bad behavior. They got themselves in a bad situation where they had injured themselves but didn't have healing. See, healing belongs to the children of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Healing belongs to the children of God even when they injure themselves. Come on. Yeah, you shouldn't have been or you fell off the ladder. Yeah, you were on the job and you tweaked yourself. Yeah, you pulled something, you stretched something, you broke something, you busted something. That doesn't mean that you got to live the rest of your life. No, healing is available even from the effects of injury. In their particular case, because they didn't handle it right, there was no healing for their injury. Their wound was severe, but there was if they had pursued it the right way. Yeah. And that's what I want to set up for you today. Amen? Amen. 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 In Isaiah chapter 53, this is about Jesus. Jesus, how, how, why, why? Are we able to be healed from these sicknesses, diseases, and even injury? You might be here today and the doctor said that you'll never have children. Maybe there was a childhood injury that caused you to not be productive. The ovaries aren't functioning right, and this will always be. I remember before our first child, first indicates that there's now a second child who is our last child. We will not be outnumbered. <laughs> Polycystic ovarian syndrome. Told my wife she had that. Like Brother Demetrius come in with a package from Amazon on a Sunday. I'm not expecting that. Neither were you expecting to deal with this at this time in your life. But you got to watch what you sign for. 
Because Jesus did something about your sicknesses, diseases, and even your injuries. What did he do? Isaiah 53 and 4 says this. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses. He did what? He bore it. That means he carried it. He caught the weight of it. If I was up here and I said, Brother Rodney, would you carry this for me? And he carried it. Who has it? If he's got it, he's got it. That means I don't have it. He bore our sickness. He carried our pains. We in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. There were sicknesses that were assigned to you by the devil. You opened the door because of your unrighteous living. You opened the door for certain things to be in your family. Come on. Some men pay for their sins with the lives of their children. The sins upon the third and the fourth generation, they There are generational things that the enemy is trying to put off. Sicknesses that ran in your grandmother and your great-grandmother and your great-great-grandmother. And he's trying to put it off on you. The Bible says that he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities. You don't have to just take it, and it's certainly not from God. The chastisement for us to have peace was upon Jesus. Peace is not just spiritual. Peace is not just mental. Peace is also physical. Come on, somebody. The beating for you to have peace in your body and peace in your mind and peace in your emotions was upon Jesus. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sickness does not belong to you. Jesus purchased your healing with his stripes those, those years ago. In Matthew chapter 8, uh, this was to fulfill that prophecy. The Bible says in verse 16, when even was come, they brought in him many that were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and he healed all that were sick. Why was Jesus healing people? He was healing them. Verse 17 says he healed all that were sick so that it might be fulfilled. So you might say, well, maybe he hasn't taken my sickness yet. Maybe he hasn't taken my disease yet or the effects of injuries yet. He did it that it might be fulfilled. That means he took it. Matter of fact, it was fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying he himself took is the word took past, present or future. See, he's going to take his future. He's taking means he's taking it right now. But the word took means it's already done. See, some of us really have to attach to the revelation of that because if you're here and you're thinking right now that you're sick, then you're missing the truth of God's message to you. I have this disease. What do you mean you have it? If he took it, what are you doing with it? He took it and you took it back? Did you want it back? No, I thought he wanted me to have it. Well, no, let me tell you the bigger, the bigger picture is there was a FedEx package from the pit of hell called Cancer Incorporated. Come on. And he's trying to get you to sign it. How do you sign it? With the words of your mouth. The moment you say, I have it, you're acknowledging, you're giving it authority to exist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let me get through this. I got got to lay some hands on. But I want to lay hands on you so that no matter what, you keep the resistance up. Amen. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter now, Isaiah was before the cross. Jesus came to fulfill it. Peter is after the cross looking back at what Jesus did and notice what he says about it. He says, who himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes, come on, you were healed. Were you. If you were healed, then you are healed. Even though the doctor says, come on now, even though you feel it, I can feel the lump. I can see it. I saw the report. But whose report are you going to believe? See, in, in, in reality, 
truth always yeah. outweighs the fact. Because yeah. the facts can change, yeah. but the truth is eternal. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to learn this, and this is, there's two things I really want to show you. Number one, it's a very simple message. Number one, I need to show you that we are healed already. So when you come up to have hands laid upon you, I know Sister Felicia was dealing with an ankle thing and had a boot on for a long time. Well, if you come thinking, well, I need to be healed. I need to be healed. I've got this disease. The doctor said, see, you're being lied to and you're believing the lie. You're essentially, you know, giving an open door for it to, zit, to exist. But what I'm saying to you is you've got to keep the resistance up. How do you keep the resistance up? Number one, you've got to believe that you are healed already. See, once you believe that you're healed already, all of a sudden you look differently and you speak differently about what's going on. See, I've been hearing it too much. There was a, a gentleman in the first service, a member of Faith Family, and uh, a few weeks back, maybe a, a month or so back, he's dealing with the symptoms of muscular sclerosis. That's a pretty serious thing. I mean, we give to the BP MS 150, you know, so that, you know, they, it's an incurable thing, right? Come on, y'all talk to me now. They're saying that he's going to, matter of fact, it's going to get worse for him, not better. That's a lie. Yeah. I'm saying that's a lie. Yeah. Just because the doctor sells that, I'm not believing that. And from the time he joined this church to the time to this day, I'm resisting muscular sclerosis in his body. Yeah. Come on. And throughout the week when I'm driving, I'm yeah. thinking about if I see somebody that looks at, I'm believing God that somehow there's going to be a miracle of healing. Yeah. But we, we, we've got to adjust something. And he was here and I helped him with this this morning. Yeah. Amen. I believe he got it. Because the other week he said, you know, well, my MS, such and such, such and such. My MS. Now, I didn't stop him at the moment. I heard him out. But then the Spirit of God began to deal with me. At some point, I got to share this with him. I shared it with him today. If you're claiming it, my arthritis, Really? You're saying that? How about this? How about as simple as this? I'm catching a cold. I'm catching a cold. You doing what to a cold? (laughs) Think about that. See, DeAndre Hopkins today? Come on. One of the Astros? Come on. They're going to be catching something, right? But what you doing? Why would you catch that? What should you be doing? Resisting that. Really? No, and I'm, and I'm showing you. The Bible said resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So you got to watch your words. You know, my arthritis, my diabetes, my high, my high blood pressure. Really? You know, about four years ago, I think it was about four years ago, maybe five years ago, I don't know. But at some point, it started to be very difficult to read stuff. And I'm like, and you know, my eyes have been great all my life, like really, really great. And they are in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me carefully. I mean, one of the reasons why I was stumbling over the faith victory report was because I didn't have my reading glasses, right? So I could see you perfectly, but, you know, see, it just seemed to be difficult. Because of the way that I've been taught, don't snuggle up and sit down with sickness and disease or injury. You resist it. You do what? You resist it. I train myself just like I did with the so-called sciatic nerve problem. I've been doing with my reading glasses. Think about how many times if you do wear reading glasses, how many times you put them on to read something in a day. I train myself. That every time, I don't say, man, my eyes are going bad, man. I need to get a better prescription. Really? (laughs) No, I need to get this thing off of me. Right? How do you do that with the words of your mouth? Every time I put on a pair of reading glasses, I say out loud, my eyes are getting better and better, stronger and stronger to the point where I don't even need glasses to read. I put them down, I'm doing something else. I put them back up, my eyes are getting better and better, stronger and stronger to the point where I don't even need glasses to read. 
After a while, I get kind of tired, like, man, my eyes. No, I don't get tired. Come on. <laughs> right? What are you doing? I keep the resistance up. Yeah. Well, you say, well, man, it doesn't like most likely. I mean, normally your eyes don't get better, right? right? According to what the doctors say. But I'm believing. The Bible says if I resist the devil, he will. Doesn't tell me when. When it's not on me. Amen. And I know the enemy is fighting the tooth and nail, but I'm believing for a supernatural intervention into the ordinary course of things. Ha ha, devil, I see good. Come on. <laughs> so I got to teach you, re reshape the words of your mouth. If you have to take high blood pressure medicine, you know, to, to, you know and you've been taking it or whatever, let me, let me share. I always have to watch what I say. If you take it, take it in the name of Jesus. Take it releasing words of authority. Say out loud. And, and I at one point was on high blood pressure medicine. I asked the doctor, what do I do, what do I have to do to get this off of me in the natural? And I literally asked him, what do I physically have to do so that I don't have to take this, this, di this medicine? Lysinopril. I resisted it. Well, you know, didn't, didn't people in your family, you know, your, your, your grandfather or your uncles or something, down there, you, well, you're going to have it too. No, I'm not. I'm resisting it, right? And sure enough, I did things naturally, but most importantly, I didn't run to the doctor first. Been running to the Lord, amen? And I stand here today and I don't take no license, no prayer. Heart blood pressure just, just real. Come on, somebody. My heart blood pressure just as smooth as it could be. <laughs> Amen. But when I was having to take that daily medication, I didn't just put it in my mouth trusting that the, the, the little pill is going to do it. I said out loud, Father, in the name of Jesus, my blood pressure is 120 over 80. It is normal for my body. I'm healthy and I don't need this medicine in Jesus' name. And I took the medicine. And he got to the point, lost some weight, did some exercises. Amen. Super with the natural. Come on. Amen. And I don't have high blood pressure. I didn't have it before. Those were just lying symptoms from the pit of hell incorporated. Amen. All right, let's get ready because I think the, the brisket's about ready. Amen. <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Anybody, anybody ready for this? Luke 4 and 40 says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases, he brought them to him and he laid hands on every one of them. In a moment, I'm going to lay hands on you. When I do, I'm not laying hands on you to heal you. You are healed. Yeah. I'm laying hands to cause the manifestation of your healing to show up. Yeah. You own it. It's yours. Yeah. We just need it to show up in the body. Not only did Jesus do that, Paul did that, which means I can do that, which means y'all can do that, right? The Bible says that believers shall lay hands on the sick. You're a believer. That means when you lay hands on the sick, it's got to go. Amen. In Acts 28, 8, it says this. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. I don't know what that is, but it don't sound good. Somebody said that can't be good. He was sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went to him and prayed. In a moment, I'm going to be praying. I'm praying to God for you. And I'm also going to lay hands on you so that you would be healed or your healing would manifest. I always make sure I say it carefully. Then also, it says this. <clears throat> uh, so number one, we are healed already. But then number two, I want to teach you to resist, not receive. So let me show you. How. I've been showing you how to resist it. Number one, in 1 Peter 5 and 8, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, you actually have an enemy. Enemy, I know everybody loves you, right? You ain't got no enemies, but you do got one enemy. That's the devil. He's hating you. He's trying to steal the quality of your life. He's trying to rob you of what belongs to you. Isn't that what a thief is? He's trying to take something that belongs to you, right? He said, what do you do about that? Do you just let him take it? No. Right. The devil walks about like a roaring lion. He's not really a roaring lion. He's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, that can scare some people, especially some kids and some children of God. Ooh, cancer. Ooh, lumps. Ooh, tumors. Ooh, disease. And they, ooh. 
Pastor, pray. I'm going in for an exam. Ooh, they say it might be something. No, no, no. You are a warrior. You are bold as a lion. He's like a roaring lion. He got his teeth knocked out. Come on. Seeking whom he may devour. The devil just can't do what he wants to do. If you resist him, he'll flee from you. Matter of fact, that's what verse 9 says. Verse 9 says, resist him. Do what? Resist him. Say it with energy. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen? So the way you deal with the devil is you resist him. You say, but we're talking about sickness, disease, and the effects of injury. All of those come from the devil. And the Bible teaches that. Matter of fact, in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing. Watch this. All who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Listen, sickness and disease is satanic oppression. On the outside, it may look like migraines, headache. But in the realm of the spirit, It's the enemy touching that person, causing them to have migraine headaches. Is that too deep? Is that too scary? Is that too spiritual for you? In other words, he's causing this condition to happen. Prove that to me from the word of God, pastor. I will. Look at the next verse in Luke chapter 13, verse verse 16. Um, Before you do that, leave Luke 13 up, but not the verse. You ever seen somebody that's been bent over? Uh, Back up for me, pastor. Just hit the back arrow. There you go. Um, have you ever seen somebody bent over? Yeah. And you know, like, and it, sometimes it's a lot. Of, oftentimes you see a very elderly person, yeah. and it's like they can't really look up. There was a woman who was bowed over. Yeah. Eighteen years she was in this condition. People knew her. Jesus knew how long she had come into the synagogue one day and she probably was no serving in there and whatnot and, and maybe listening to Jesus teaching and so forth. And he, ca- he commanded healing that happened with her. And the, the Pharisees had a problem with it. You know, in the na- if that woman had gone to the doctor today, they would say she would have some kind of bone disease that's incurable, right? Now, in a moment, she's about to stand up straight. Right. But the doctors would have told her that that's incurable rheumatoid arthritis. You know, where where the condition where it's just there's no way there is just the bone, the joints. Come on. Talk to me today. The world, the doctor would say that it's an incurable sickness and disease and would give no credence at all to something happening in the realm of the spirit. But Jesus called them on it. In Luke 6, Luke 6, Luke 13, and say, I'm so excited. Come on, calm down. Put it up. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Who bound her? Satan. He caused this condition yes, yes, yes. that she couldn't lift up. Yes. And he said, this is a child of God. Yes. Shouldn't the children of God, healing is the children's yes. bread. Ought not this woman with this condition that the doctors say is incurable? Be, oh, I didn't tell y'all the rest of the PCOS, or you did get the rest of the story. Amen. She don't have PCOS. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, she's got two babies now. Amen. Amen. And so shall it be in your life. If you're married and desire to have children, resist what the devil is saying. Amen. No matter how long it takes, you stay in the fight. He told her, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And she was made whole. Then let me give you one more. In James, oh, this is it. Stand up on your feet. The Bible says resist the devil. Go go ahead and put it up. And he will flee. Sickness and disease is from the devil. It's a simple message. Uh, For the sake of time, because everything is warm, I'm going to lay hands on you, every one of you who want to have hands laid on. But I need um, need the young lady to come. Mother Lucy, if you would come, the Spirit of God wants me to lay hands on you. You've told me of no report, but the Spirit of God brought you up on my heart. And for really probably years now, I've been believing for some new organs to manifest on the inside of you that no more symptoms of sickness or discomfort or disease. Come on up. Yeah, God's doing a work in you. Amen. Hold my hand for a minute. That's the anointing. Amen. 
You can just walk with me for a minute. You know, I stand with you. I stand for you. And I stand against what the enemy wants to do in your life. You can have new organs. He, he made your body, right? He can give you new parts. Amen. And you can live without discomfort in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards our dear sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Mother Lucy. I don't know what the cause was, what the conditions were, but I know that Jesus was wounded, was bruised in the chastisement. And I believe that with his stripes, she was healed. There it is. Say it out loud. Sickness. Disease. Injury. Injury. I resist you. I resist you. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come here, baby. Amen. This is Trinity. Amen. Come here. Y'all say hi to Trinity. <laughs> Amen. Is she beautiful? The devil's trying to lie to her and say that she will have hearing impairment for the rest of her life. How many of you want to resist the devil with me for her? With her mama and her father, right? Amen. Amen. Come on down here. Y'all stretch your hands towards her. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen. It might happen today. But I know she will hear perfectly in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. Step down here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon her according to the authority of your word. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever. And he said that the works that he did that I would do also. He healed the sick, those that were death. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Were made whole. I release that anointing to remove that burden and destroy that yoke. I command healing to manifest and that she will hear perfectly. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Now, my brother... Uh, Pastor Carroll, he's been in ministry for a long time. I saw this flash in my heart. He has seen in his life and in the lives of others individuals with limbs shorter. They were born and it's just a little bit shorter than the other one. And he's seen limbs grow out. If you're here and you have something like that, he's standing over here. I, I just want him to lay hands on you. Amen. So just make your way. He'll talk to you, minister to you in whatever way. But if that's you, I want you to go that way in the name of Jesus. All right. What else, Lord? Come on, pray with me for a moment. Diabetes, okay, the symptoms, the symptoms of diabetes, it's a lie from hell. And I want to resist it with you. If the doctors are saying that you're pre-diabetic, or that you have type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes, I want to lay hands on you and I want to resist that in the name of Jesus. Just come on now. Just come on right now. In the name of Jesus, I resist it. Say it out loud. I resist it. I do not receive it in the name of Jesus. Say it out loud. I resist it in the name of Jesus. You won't have my eyesight. Say it out loud. You won't take my eyesight. You won't take my limbs. They belong to me. Healing belongs to me in the name of Jesus. Say out loud, I resist it. 
I refuse it. I do not receive it. Take your hand off of me. In Jesus' name, hold your hands up. Say it out loud. I resist it. I do not receive it. Devil, you got to go. Loose me. I belong to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> you know exactly what to do. You've been doing it and you've been living it. <laughs> Woo! Yes, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo, there it is. That's a special anointing. <laughs> Woo! Who else? Who else? Who else? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Say it. I resist it. In the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of me. You won't have me. You won't have my eyesight. You won't change my life. I am the victor and not the victim. In the name of Jesus. Say, devil, I resist you. Digestive system. Work normally. Say it out loud. Digestive system. Work normally as God is designed. In the name of Jesus. Blood sugar. Be normal. Process sugar properly. In the name of Jesus. I say no. In the name of Jesus. I say no to sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I won't have to live with it. I refuse it today. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Glory. Come here. Glory to God. Come here. Hallelujah. Amen. High blood pressure symptoms. High blood pressure symptoms. I don't whether you take the medicine, whether you, you know, have the symptoms of it. I want to lay hands on you right now. Just come on up. Just come on up. Father, in the name of Jesus. Haven't I not said? Oh, have you not heard? <laughs> For that which I intend to do shall be done. That which I would to do will be done. Say yes to me and say no to him. He will not have you. Say it out loud, devil. devil. I, resist you. I resist you. Take your hands off of Take me. Off. Every, hook, every hook, every grip. Every grip. Be, loosed. Be, loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed in me yeah, now. In Jesus' name. There it is, right there. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Oh, look up at me. You will not die from a heart attack, and you will never have a stroke. <laughs> your heart speak to your arteries you command them to be normal no hardening hallelujah no hardening of the arteries you speak to every part of your cardiovascular amen <laughs> amen glory to god say it out loud i receive my healing manifest i refuse to live like this no longer will he put off will he put off on me what jesus paid for i thank you father for my healing in jesus name how are you are you ready you're receiving today this is your day it turns today now you know how to talk now you know how to walk Put up a fight, amen? Hold your hands up. In the name of Jesus, say it out loud. I receive my healing manifesting. My body will be normal, will function normal, like God has said in Jesus' name. You ready? Are you a visitor? Are you a visitor? Wow, God brought you here for this. Second week. Second week. Oh, man. Amen. God saw fit to have me say this for you. You don't have to live like this. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands upon you. 
under the authority of Jesus. And I say no to what the devil has tried to do in you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Nice to meet you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Every time. Okay. Amen. And then where, where God says mental illness is concerned, this is for you. Okay. We resist it. And Derek, too. Lorita. Lorita, too. Okay? And I got you, right? Yep. I'm standing with you. Amen. I'm reminded all the time. I keep it in my heart, okay? I got you. Love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, what's the symptom? Everything that you called out today, you spoke to my heart. Oh, I yeah. said, all of what you called oh, out today, from accident. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. I got you. You ever had a jump for your car, your battery went down? They take two cables and they put them together. And the bigger battery will strengthen the smaller battery. I'm not saying you don't have a battery. I'm just saying I'm giving you a boost in your faith today. And those things have been lying to you. Each and every one of them, they've been lying to you. You've got to tell them you're a lie from the devil. I don't receive you. I don't sign for it. Say it out loud. Devil, take your hands off of my life, off of my heart, off of my body. I won't live like this. From this day forward, I serve you notice. You're off limits. And in the name of Jesus, heart be right. Digestive be right. Blood pressure be right. And in the name of Jesus, I will live and not die and declare the works of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. cardiovascular system I command my heart to be healthy beat normally I command the pressure to be regular and to be normal and in the name of Jesus devil I resist you you gotta go leave now in Jesus name amen 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 all right, I got one more. But this is Brother John. This is Brother John. And uh, he was thrown off that truck. And I, I'm going to see a miracle. We're going to see a victory. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Come up here, John. Uh, Larry, I'm sorry. Come up here, Larry Breeden. I'm talking about John. I'm thinking about Larry. <laughs> what happened? Why are you on this cane? You're back. That's why I thought it was your ankle. It was both. It was both at one point, right? What I, I didn't know what, what was going on with your back. I've had 21 shots in nine months. 21 shots in nine months. I just got some kind of back disease. Some kind of back disease. Yeah. 
So, man, this message got to be like really good today, right? <laughs> so now for both of us, for both of you, our words have authority. Amen. So I don't have, is not mine. I will not always be. I command, devil, I resist. My, you know, one thing that I say, because sometimes I have some discomfort in my lower back, okay? And I keep both of you guys in my prayers all the time. I hope you all know that. But sometimes I have discomfort in my back. I say continually, my skeletal system is blessed. Amen. Right? Especially if you're dealing with it. Just say it every day. My skeletal, if you feel the pain, let the pain be the reminder, come on, yeah. Yeah. of the good thing to say. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, yeah. from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, we speak to your spine in the name of Jesus. Be healed. There it is. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There it is. L5, be normal, allow me. Walk straight, walk strong, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. I was before. Yeah. That's the fact. Come on, right? Hey, listen. So listen, if you have any kind of lower back issues, pain in your back, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We're almost done. Come on up. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands upon my sister in agreement that healing already is hers. The devil said, the doctor said, but your word says that by his stripes, we were healed. Sickness got to go. Disease and discomfort got to go. And even the effect of injury got to go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be it unto you in the name of Jesus. Be it unto you in the name of Jesus. Come on, be unto you. Say it out loud. This is mine. No longer will I live like this. I receive my healing. And I resist this sickness in Jesus' name. Say, it's mine. My back will be normal. My spine will grow straight and be healthy. I will not live with deformity or dysfunction or disease. I believe the word. Jesus is my healer in Jesus' name. Look at God, right? Come on, right? Oh, man. Glory to God. Woo. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, oh. Woo, man. Now you know how to talk about it, right? Yes, sir. Now you know how to talk about it. Yes, sir. Hey, man. What's going on? My back and fibromyalgia. Okay. My back and fibromyalgia. I like how you said that. It's a name but it's not mine. And you didn't, you didn't say it was yours, and I love that. Quick to learn, right? Hallelujah. See, this is how you're going to get back to where you want to be. You're not going to be living with all that pain and all that discomfort. Amen? I keep you so in my heart constantly. You're not forgotten. You are loved. God loves you. And healing is an outsource of the love that God has for you. Do you receive that today? Hallelujah. I speak to the spine. I speak to the nervous system and the nerves. I command them to be whole and be normal. Devil, I resist you. Say it out loud. I resist you, devil. I am healed. Not going to be. I'm already healed. Pain, you got to go. Come on. You got to go. Say it. Pain, you got to go. I won't live like this. In the name of Jesus. I resist sickness. I resist the devil. Flee now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. What's going on? My lower back. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it out loud. Sickness, disease, discomfort. I resist you now. Leave me alone. 
<laughs> Just keep saying it. Amen. Amen. Lower back. Amen. I receive my healing. Say it. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shabbat. I need the boy. Not here. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, maybe I didn't call out the symptoms that you've been dealing with. In a moment, I'm going to dismiss everybody, but I'm going to minister to you if I didn't call your Pacific Pacific. Amen. <laughs> Specific situation. Amen. For those of, the, of you that are going to be dismissed, We've got a ton of food. We have food for over 250 people. I smoked the brisket myself. <laughs> it's got to be some of the best. <laughs> Brother, Brother Heiss's daughter taught me some, I mean, golly, she helped me in some marinades. And just, it's, it, it went to another level. Valencia, she used to serve on the, on the, Anyway, check it out. We've got